Hey yo gang, what's happening? It's your boy Rain TJ back again with another reaction video. And today we're looking at this Minecraft, um, this teen who played Minecraft a lot or whatever, who trolled the Russian government. I don't know. So let's just get into it. Now more than ever, police and federal authorities browse social media and internet forums. These agents attempting to identify and arrest radicalized individuals before they become violent. While there have been several instances of government agents successfully thwarting such online operatives, there have been some crackdowns that aren't as cut and dry and appear- Also, sorry, sorry to cut in mid-conversation, but if you're not subscribed, this is Wa Wavy Web Surf. Subscribe, hit the like button. It's as easy as that, bro. And you could do the same for me, you know what I mean? If you like my drawings to the side, you could also check out my pro uh, my products down below. Um, it might take you over to my online store where you might see some some shirts or you might see some paintings, some drawings, some posters, you know, some artwork, all artwork by yours truly. Check it out, show some love, or you could just hit like, subscribe, that's free, two clicks. But back to the video while I continue this time drawing more like an oppressive government trying to censor speech, such as the case of Nikita Yuvarov, a Minecraft player who was sent to a Russian gulag after protesting the arrest of a political enemy of the Russian government. In a story involving alleged torture, political subterfuge, and of course, threats in Minecraft, today I'll be sharing with you all the story of the Konsk Affair, also known as the Russian Minecrafter Arrests. Today's video is sponsored by Keeps, and to begin the ad, let's look at my hair from some old videos back in 2020. Yeah, as you can see, your boy's hair wasn't looking quite as robust as it is nowadays. I didn't feel like going bald, so I decided to do robust. something about my hair loss and got started with Keeps, and right. the results have been pretty insane. Here's me at six months after starting Keeps, a year after starting, two years after starting, and then there's me now, nearly three years after starting Keeps, and I gotta say, your boy's looking pretty good. Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved hair loss products at a can't-beat price, and best of all, you skip the trip to the doctor's office and pharmacy. Keeps will set you up with a prescriber online and ship your prescription right to your front door, and in four to six months, you should start seeing results. Look, I stand by Keeps and I've been using the stuff for a good majority of my YouTube career at this point and the results are evident if I must say so. So if you're a guy out there that's having some anxiety about hair loss, there's no better time than now to start Keeps. Hair loss stops with Keeps. You guys can go to www.keeps.com wavy to take advantage of their special offer. This is Nikita Yuvarov, the teenager mentioned in the intro that was sentenced to a Russian gulag. But to understand how he got here, we need to go back to the beginning. And it all begins with a Russian in the beginning. mathematician. This is Azad Miftikov. Azad has been described as an outspoken Russian political activist, mm. but he was most known at the time of this story taking place for his work in mathematics as a graduate student. He was a well-regarded figure in the Russian mathematics community and had been on the receiving end of several academic awards for his work in the field. Azat was politically vocal as well. Described by some as an anarchist, Azat was said to have been highly critical of Russia's ever-growing authoritarian trajectory. And he was no stranger to speaking out against the rising trend of these apparent free speech crackdowns that had been going on in the country. Over the last decade, Russian authorities have been alleged by many of actively using the court system as a way to silence those who don't politically align with the ruling regime. Huh. As that was certainly someone who agreed with these allegations. Now with Mr. Right. Miftikov's anarchist political leanings in mind, it might come to no surprise to you that on February 1st of 2019, Azat Miftikov was arrested under extreme dubious circumstances. The Russian government, known for its distaste of anarchists, communists, and anti-fascists, well, it seemed like they thought he was a political liability in the country, and they seemed to believe that he may have been up to some criminal activity. Huh. So in February, they would raid the dorm room that he lived in under the suspicion of the man being a bomb maker. After the search was conducted, police reportedly claimed that they had proof of Azat building a, quote, explosive device. But when this was presented to the court, the judge opted to 
throw the case out, citing lack of evidence, and Azat would be freed about a week later from being arrested initially. After being released, Azad would go on to claim that the police had tortured him while he was in custody. Hmm. Well, if that was true, unfortunately for Azad, he was about to be subjected to more of this torture because he was rearrested on the same day of his release. <laughs> yes, the outspoken academic now found himself arrested again, with authorities now what? putting a new set of allegations against him. This time, they were claiming that he was responsible for a smoke grenade that was used in an attack on the Russian Conservative Party headquarters in January of 2018, over a year prior. What? According to police, they learned of this information from an anonymous witness who had apparently come forward and claimed that they saw Miftikov near the party headquarter building during the smoke bombing. Curiously though, when it came time for Azat to face this anonymous accuser, authorities claimed the individual wasn't available for questioning because they had since died from cardiac trauma. <laughs> That's pretty convenient. Oh yeah, Minecraft gets involved in this story eventually, just Yo. <laughs> And with that, you kind of start to get the feeling that the Russian government is fucking with this guy. <laughs> yes. So he's a high-powered mathematician, famous at universities and anarchist leaning. Not their favorite uh, combination of uh, ingredients there. It's almost as if they were trying to frame him for a crime that he didn't commit so that they could use the courts to censor him. You know, by throwing him in jail. <laughs> and this treatment of Mr. Miftikov would continue. In February of 2020, the government indicted Azad yet again for allegedly being tied to the terroristic anarchist political group known as the People's Self-Defense, an accusation that Azad emphatically denied. As this bizarre case developed, there was international media attention being granted to it and university students started becoming sympathetic to the man's cause. Facing prison for these seemingly bogus charges, Azad would speak publicly when given the chance, even stating that at one point while he was arrested, police had tried to pressure him into a confession by torturing him with a screwdriver. Azad also alleged mm. that police were habitually using anonymous witnesses to frame him for crimes that he didn't commit and were trying to implicate him as being a member of a terrorist organization. In his eyes, only doing so because his political beliefs didn't align with the authoritarian right Russian government status quo. And this was a theory shared amongst European academics and many in the mainstream media. To protest what they saw as blatant censorship, over 100 Russian academics would stand up for Azat and collectively wrote an open letter describing him as a political prisoner and demanded his release. Mm. A groundswell of support from around the world was embracing this embattled mathematician, and his supporters even included that of teenage Minecraft players. Mm. Allow me to introduce you to this story's protagonist or antagonist, depending on how you look at it. This is 14-year-old Nikita Yuvarov. Similar to Azat, this teenager was said to have had anarchist political leanings, but the two couldn't be in more different life circumstances at the time of this story taking place. Azat was a renowned mathematician, and Nikita was just a teenager spending most of his time playing video games. One of Nikita's friends was another anarchist-leaning Russian teen named Dennis. Nikita and Dennis were said to have been avid Minecraft players, and often chatted about current events surrounding their ideology within the game world. Naturally, when the troubling news surrounding Azat Miftikov found its way to the computer screens of Dennis and Nikita, the impressionable teenagers were outraged. And apparently, after some brooding on the matter, the two teenagers decided that they were going to protest this man's treatment. So galvanized by the cause that they even would log off and touch grass in an effort to do so. Unfortunately, though, this grass-touching escapade would land them in some big trouble. In the summer of 2020, Dennis and Nikita reportedly went to a Russian Federal Security Service building and posted flyers declaring Miftikov's innocence and criticizing the Russian government. For those of you who might be unaware, the Federal Security Service, or FSB, is essentially the Russian equivalent to the CIA. The FSB has been criticized on numerous occasions as essentially being the modern version of the notorious Soviet KGB, but that's a story for another day. Anyways, Russian authorities who were in the middle of trying to prosecute Azat didn't take this act of protest lightly. 
and upon discovering the flyers, they immediately began hunting for the individuals sympathetic to the mathematician's cause. Well connected as many federal intelligence agencies are, it wouldn't take long for the government to figure out that Nikita and Dennis were the individuals that posted the flyers up on the building. Upon discovering them responsible, Nikita and Dennis were detained along with three other Russian boys alleged to have been associated with the protest. All of them were arrested under the premise of suspicion of being associated with a terrorist group, a similar allegation that was levied at Mr. Miftikov. And right now, admittedly, the boys are in a tough spot, but it only gets worse when Minecraft becomes involved. After being arrested, Nikita and his friend's phones were confiscated, and authorities searched through them looking for any evidence that could strengthen their claims of the boys being terrorists. It's been reported that during this search, federal agents found numerous memes making fun of the Federal Security Service, and they also claimed to have found chat logs discussing anarchist ideologies on social media with the boys making posts and sending messages sympathizing with the cause of several anti-government movements and supporting Azad. And even still, even with the stuff that I just mentioned, none of this even really sounds inherently criminal. But as with death and taxes, on the wavy WebSurf channel, Minecraft is inevitable. On top of the anarchist chatter that the feds allegedly found on the boys' devices, federal authorities would find what they saw as their smoking gun. That being a threat that was allegedly issued by Nikita Yuvarov. The threat oh, reportedly stating that he planned to blow up a federal security service building. In Minecraft. Yeah, not metaphorically, like literally blow up a replica of the building in Minecraft. Just to be clear here. And this was no empty threat as apparently Nikita with friends allegedly built a replica of the Federal Security Service building in the Minecraft game world and they had plans to blow it up. Doing this for fun or doing it to simulate or practice for a real attack, who's really to say? But the government certainly felt that the latter was the case here. On top of all of this Minecraft stuff, the teenagers were also being accused of attempting to create weapons in their backyard to use in attack, <laughs> with video surfacing what? allegedly showing the teens setting off firecrackers and throwing Molotov cocktails in a seemingly abandoned building. Oh While some goodness. would look at this stuff as just irresponsible acts of angsty teenagers, the Fed certainly didn't feel like that was the case. Russian authorities claimed that all all of this was part of an effort to train themselves for acts of terrorism that they would hypothetically be committing in the future. Terrorism targeting the government and its people. With all of this evidence in hand, the government criminally charged three of the boys, including Nikita and Dennis. The initial charge they received was one claiming that they were part of an anarchist terrorist organization. However, this was later dismissed due to lack of evidence. But a second charge that was levied against them would stick. That being that they were training to become terrorists. This allegation oh would become the basis of what has now become long-standing legal troubles for these teenagers. Following their arrests, Nikita and company were subjected to an arduous interrogation process that took a period of several days. And eventually, the boys were met with an ultimatum. That ultimatum essentially being this. Sign a confession stating that you attempted to organize a terrorist community and the feds might go easy on you. When presented what? this offer, two of the boys quickly capitulated and signed the confession. They were then given house arrest pending further legal inquiry. But one of the boys would refuse to sign, that individual being none other than Nikita Yuvarov. Nikita fundamentally disagreed with the government's portrayal of his activities and denied having any plans for violence. And out of principle, he wouldn't sign the dotted line. Unfortunately for him though, this now made him a target with the prosecutors and they would hone in trying to get a criminal conviction on him. The state wanted to make an example out of him and send a message to young anarchists and believers of non-status quo political ideologies around the country. And what began as a Minecraft building replica was now spiraling into a complicated legal battle spanning years. A lot of you out there watching might be asking yourselves by this point in the video how a 14 year old is even able to be charged with such criminal allegations. What you have to realize is that while 18 is considered the age of adulthood in Russia, depending on the crime committed, you can be held criminally responsible for criminal activity as early as the age of 14. Mm. Hey. 
I don't make up the rules, I just report the stories. But with all that being said, it's no surprise that 14-year-old Nikita's mother was involved in this at some point. Nikita's mother was in absolute disbelief regarding the circumstances surrounding her son in the wake of these charges. Throughout Nikita's legal case, his mother Anna was an extremely outspoken defender of his character and criticized the Russian government for what she characterized as flagrant misconduct. Nikita's mother also claimed that the FSB had particularly aggressively targeted Nikita because he didn't have a father figure in his life. Essentially claiming that the government thought that, you know, he wouldn't have a strong male figure to stand up for him publicly and that they could kind of swoop in for an easy, you know, <laughs> closed case. She says, quote, the fact that Nikita does not have a father made the police very happy. Support for mother did little to dissuade the Russian government, nor did international outcries surrounding Nikita's case. And things would begin to look even more grim for Nikita, as in 2021, as at Miftikov, the individual that Nikita allegedly supported was finally sentenced to serve six years in prison in a Russian penal colony for, quote, hooliganism. <laughs> and it was beginning to look like Nikita was about to face a similar fate. Eventually, the feds got what they wanted. As in February of 2022, Nikita Yuvarov, now 16 years old, was sentenced to serve five years in a penal colony for his alleged crimes. What? In his final courtroom appearance, he maintained his innocence and stated he would serve his time with, quote, a clear conscience and dignity. And with that, a Minecraft player was sent to a Russian gulag, and that's where he remains to this day. Similar to the case of Azat Miftikov, many Russians were outraged at this decision, with many what? defending Nikita's right to freedom of speech and lamenting at the government's seemingly cruel treatment of a young man who hadn't even graduated high school yet. That's crazy. It's an interesting situation that brings the question of where the limits of free speech lie in the forefront. Many believe to this day that the sole reason he was treated in this way was simply because he didn't fit the government's idea of what a citizen should believe. A Russian human rights organization seemed to agree with this sentiment, declaring the case against the boys as blatant political persecution. The idea of teenagers being arrested, persecuted, and sent to a gulag naturally is, you know, pretty crazy, especially because the threats that they made were specifically, well, allegedly made, were specifically referring to a building that was in the Minecraft game world and wasn't technically referring to the actual physical location, you know, the FSB building. And while we've certainly seen situations here in the United States where individuals are arrested for threats that they issued online, I find a hard time imagining if this situation occurred here, that if there was no actual physical violence component, that Nikita would be sentenced. But who the fuck knows? Maybe I'm just an ignorant American. A concerning footnote to this story is that in September of 2023, Azat Miftikov was released early from the penal colony that he was sent to, only to then be arrested on the same day of his release, reportedly charged with justifying terrorism. The conclusion what? of this dilemma has yet to come, but now facing new charges from the government, things aren't looking good for the mathematician. As for Minecraft player Nikita Yuvarov, hopefully he can stay out of trouble after serving his time in the Russian gulags. Well, you made it to the end. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. I think that's crazy. I think that's absolutely crazy. That's just ridiculous, gang. Gang, what? Yeah, you got some places in the world you just do not go to, and I feel like Russia is one of them. It's definitely one of them places that you just don't go hopping around. Nah, bro. That's crazy. Anyways, gang, thanks for watching today's video. If you like, you know what I mean? Hit the like, hit the subscribe. You could share it too. If you want one of my uh, drawings, you know, or... One of my merch, one of my shirts, you could hop over to my store. I got products down below. Thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. All right, bye.